Hey guys, Friar Guy back, and we're getting ready to go to another call. And yes, it's a Friar this time again. And what the Friar we're going to is a Haney Penny Evolution Elite Friar. So what that means is it's a big bank Friar. So it's not the small single vat Friars a lot of stores will have or something like that. This is one that's got multiple banks. And the actual issue on this one is that it's not filtering or pumping back up. Now there could be a whole different bunch of reasons this can be um, some of the, on these particular fryers one of the most common issues is the o-rings are missing or damaged or worn and it's just pulling in air another possible problem is that the filter pan is a, a, assembled incorrectly heck one problem could be that the overload on the motor itself is tripped and we'll just have to reset that now why the overload bay trip is can be a whole bunch of different reasons you know Maybe there's oil getting into the motor from a bad seal kit. Uh, maybe the motor seized up. Maybe the pump head seized up. Um, just an old motor. So, but we're gonna find out what's going on. Now, there's also other possible reasons. It could be that the uh, there's a hole or one of the lines is cracked and broken, so it's pulling air and from that broken line and not sucking oil up into the filter pan. It could be a clogged uh, line. I mean, there's really a whole bunch of different reasons. It could be the uh, the pump had lost its vacuum. So we're gonna find out when we get there. So I will see you at the store. All right guys, we are here. This is the fryer, this is the uh, Evolution Elite. Now here's the issue. Now each vat works independently, but there's only one pump and motor. Um, what I wanna show you is this. So to access the filter menu on this, so that way you can pump the fryer, you know, just push and hold the F button, right? you go into the filter menu and you'll see different options. Use the side arrows here to scroll through. So you know, two, daily filter dispose, drain to pan, this can be fill from pan. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna fill from pan. Push that to fill from pan and pump it again, push again, and it should, it should run. It's not doing anything, nothing. So what we're gonna do is, is the motor's not humming, it's not running or anything. Right here, there is an overload. It's a little red button, you can't see it. I'm not gonna try to get the phone in there. So, what you gotta do is you push it really hard and it clicks. Next, we'll test it again. There we go, see nothing's happening. Tells me the motor is seized up. All right, so next step. All right, something I want to point out is make sure you have three O-rings here. You can see there's one here, but two missing. Now what can happen is, is it can start pulling air and that can ruin the seal and everything inside you guys' pump head. And that can cause oil to leak and migrate and get into the motor. It looks like it might have gotten into the motor there. So uh, eventually I'm going to replace this, but what I'm going to do first is just make sure it didn't lose its vacuum. Because it feels like it's running, but it could just be humming. Um, the, or the pump head's clogged. We'll find that out in a second. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna break this fitting loose up here. There's a fitting right here. Break it loose, run it, and then as soon as oil squirts out, I gotta tighten it up. Uh, so that way we can get all the air out of the lines. All right, so I got this loose up here. Just a pair of channel locks. If you got the right size wrench, will work. Now again, I'm gonna go ahead and hit start. You just have a pair of fill vat, right? And as soon as it starts to leak through, I'm gonna have to hit stop, so. If it nothing. Alright, well. Yep, so I have a feeling. So I'm gonna take out the motor now. This is a fun part. To even check the head of the pump, you can't just take it out. You got right here these little boxes in the way and that's where your ignition control modules are at for each vat. Um, so what we gotta do is, is there's a couple of, uh, I think 7 16 nuts and bolts right here, here, and one on the very back side. You gotta take those off. Then you gotta reach in through this side door here, remove this jib here, jug, uh, well, yeah, oil. Um, undo back here to get access to where the wires are at. Undo the screw here and here. Then you can get access to the wires and to this thing here. The conduit, take it out, pull the wires out. Then you can take this whole thing out 
Also, yeah, I forgot there's another hose in the back. In order to get to that, you have to go to this door, reach underneath all this stuff, and then you can get to, there's a hose, right? That coupler right up there, that fitting right up there. So that's what we're gonna have to do now. This is on the underside, by the way, so. Now you may be wondering, why am I not using gloves? No, the reason is, the gloves just kind of get in the way. I'll just wash my hands a hundred times. There you go. Now it's undone. All I gotta do is undo those but nuts and bolts. Now to get now to get to this back bolt, you actually have to reach around to the back here with the wrench and then with either another wrench or a ratchet get to the bolt that's underneath there. Now you're gonna see there's a bar here and there's another one right here. Oh hold that gun in. Do not remove those bars at all. You're gonna make life so much more difficult if you do. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this thing on thing out. All right, real quick. So those are the bars I was talking about not to pull out. Um, if you do that, this whole thing's just gonna drop down and uh, it's gonna be a nightmare. Now I got all three nuts and bolts out. There isn't one on this side here in the back. It's just the three, two in the front, one in the back. And now it's generally free to move. Um, it may be sticking to this plate here, you know, but now we gotta go ahead and get this conduit off that's back here. Um, some people will actually take the side panel off the fryer, undo it from over here and then drag it out. Me. I find that I can just get a screwdriver here on, and uh, one down here, open the thing up real quick, undo the screws, and then I can actually generally unscrew this so that way I don't have to mess with that uh, on the side panel. So, I'll show it here. Now that I kind of got it loose, if I have to, I can actually just adjust the motor to get to that. Uh, if I can get the screw down in there. Watch, it's a flathead. No, oh, it's a flathead. All right, it is a Phillips. Um, it was just so caked of grease, I had to kind of really press in it, but once you get it in there, you can spin it free a little bit. And then you gotta get the other one down here in the bottom, which came out nice and easy right there. Then you can go ahead and just open this up. If I can get my hand in there without other hand. There we go. Now it's open. Now this is already kind of loose, so this should spin off pretty easy. This little uh, fitting that goes inside there, right here where the thumb's at. So yeah, it's nice and loose, so it, it should come off real easily. What I'm going to do is, is I'm going to go ahead and take the uh, screws off, uh, or sorry, the wires off. Screw that a little bit. Now you don't have to worry about getting shocked or anything unless you're actively running this thing doesn't have any power coming through it to the relay so uh, you'll be fine to go ahead and just use the needle nose pliers and get those off Let's see if I can turn this to show you the wires so I'm trying to get so you can see the wires but it's gonna be two black wires that come off of this thing here so it's gonna be uh, I'll show you the terminals here in a minute all right, it's a little better view there, but the wire you're gonna to wanna to remove is gonna be uh, this one right here, so that one right there, and it's gonna be this one right here, all right? All right, it's been completely disconnected now. I can just pull this whole thing out. All right, next, we gotta disconnect the pump head. So this right here is a half inch nut or bolt, and there's another one on the underside. Take that out. You may have to pry a little bit so it'll stick. Uh, so we can verify if the motor's was seized up or if the pump head's dirty. All right, so here's what's happened. This seal kit on the pump head uh, went bad and leaked and got into the motor here and seized it up. I should be able to turn this by hand and I can't, okay? Now if I put a pair of channel locks or pliers on there, it, it will turn. And all this gooey stuff here is the dried up oil that I gotta go ahead and clean this out, 
replace the seal kit. Seems like I gotta open this up. It'll give me a chance to inspect the roller bearings and everything like that. And um, I'll show you all of that. So I'm gonna go get the pump, uh, new uh, seal kit and new motor, and we'll go ahead and get that replaced. All right, so to remove these uh, little hex nuts here, it's a 3 16 uh, hex nuts there to get them uh, to remove them. Now this part actually getting these to come off is not so bad, but to get the cap here separated is a bit tricky. You'll have to get like a flathead or something and pry it off and hit it a little bit, but eventually it will come off. All right, so I already got the top half separated from the pump head. I gotta still finish cleaning this out. I wanna show you guys something here. The rollers here, as you can see, got a flat spot so these rollers need to be go ahead and replaced also make sure you check this o-ring that's not torn or damaged or anything right here if it is go ahead and replace that as well um, you know here's what the other side is, is I'm gonna show you guys how to remove this uh, bearing or the seal that's inside there and it's actually really easy getting this separated was a pain in the butt because that greaser acts like glue so fought a little bit but not too much All right, I got most of the grease out of here. It doesn't have to be spotless, but you need to get in here pretty clean because we got to knock this uh, bushing out. To do that, you turn it around, get like a flathead or something, and there's a little spine right there you can see. Get like your flathead on there, and then just hit it with a hammer or a pair of channel locks or something, and just go around the circle. Eventually, it will just pop out. All right, so this is the new motor in here. Now, Henny Penny likes to do this crazy thing, which is they like to tape and staple there are boxes so that way you can doll your knife so I just use my flathead go across here so that way I'm not gonna doll a good knife or something see I think it's a bit overkill but you know it is what it is I'm gonna go ahead and replace that motor all right now I'm gonna show you guys how to install the seal kit so here's the seal kit part number is a 17476 all right we need to use this part First, and we're gonna we're gonna put it into here. Now, make sure that hole, unlike how it is now, is uh is actually clean, so that way it will seat properly. All right, these seals here have uh, little cross marks on one side and none on the other. This goes down, so make sure you get that in there. And then what I usually do is once I get in there, I just get my screwdriver and I just a couple good wax and boom, it's in place. There we go. It's no gap in there. So there we go. All right. And the next step is to put the rest of the seal kit on. So you're going to have this washer. You put it in here, slide it down on top. Next, it's going to actually be this uh, little spacer or right there. This part's the fun part. You've got a spring with this little, uh, I don't know what it's called. Spring goes on there and this goes on top. This is actually kind of a pain in the butt to get on. Now, one key to get this lined up right is to actually get the old pump head. Not the old pump, but to put the pump head on to compress it down. Make sure you get it into the right position. So this is going to be towards this part of the front goes towards the front and this goes towards the back of the fryer. So imagine how it would be on the fryer, which is sitting this way. So pump head's got to go on this way. Once you just press this down by hand, you can get one of these uh, nuts in place or bolts in place, excuse me. Now there's these little uh, clips, things, uh, brackets that go inside here. I tend not to put the one on the bottom in place, so that way if the seal kit goes bad, instead of it just leaking into the motor, it'll just drip out. I'd rather have a dirty fryer than this seize up on them again and cost a lot of money later on. So now I'm gonna go ahead and put the other uh, bracket in there and uh, the, the uh, bolt, and then I'm gonna tighten it down. All right, so I put the new rotor in there and I'll put these new roller, uh, roller, uh, excuse me, rollers in there now i'm going to go ahead and put the top back on i just want to keep in mind you can see this car hard to see there's a little nipple right here and there's actually one right here as well line those up so you know they're in the correct position okay make sure if you need to replace the o-ring again you replace it I know there's the... side note 